Well, welcome everybody and thank you for attending another week of Conscious Conversations at Fitness for the Body, Mind and Soul in Hendersonville, North Carolina. And I'm really delighted to have a fabulous guest here today who is not only a wonderful spiritual inspiration, but also a friend of 20 years and uh, certainly a nomad, someone who I sort of lost touch with a few years back, but certainly was always still in my heart but didn't know where um, Tolo was. And uh, I heard that he was in Asheville. I was like, oh my gosh, Asheville, well that's right down the road. So we, we connected via Facebook and I knew that, um, I knew this gentleman as Bill Perry when I first met him and that was 20 years ago. And we used to uh, go to see you, I think at the um, Changing Times bookstore and, and metaphysical center. And then you used to do uh, events at our center, Palm Beach Center for Living. And you actually, at that time, channeled uh, uh, Dr. G. How many of you all remember Dr. G? <laughs> yes, we all, yes, that Dr. G was, was fun and great, uh, intuitive, great messenger. And um, now, uh, with all of uh, what's happened since maybe the last time I saw you, which is, could very easily be 10 years, uh, you have moved into a different place and you now share the energy of Tolo and that is with a lowercase t. So uh, Tolo, welcome to uh, Conscious Conversations and what exactly is a Tolo? Well, thank you for um, the privilege of being here today. And um, it's always this interesting evolution of Tolo. Uh, actually, Tolo came in a meditation uh, in Key West when um, a mutual friend of ours, and a friend of many of you here, uh, Margaret Limbo, uh, were facilitating uh, a workshop. And in her part of the facilitation, she asked us to tap into our own spiritual name, what that is in the non-physical realm. And the name came just popping out of, of the, the universal expression, and it was the name Tolo. And I said, oh, that's nice and wonderful, and who, who in the world would want to be called Tolo? <laughs> and I just filed it. And slowly over the years, that memory came back in that name, and I could sense the essence of it. And so uh, the retreat center uh, that um, was part of my life at the time was uh, sold. And I'm at this point three years ago, two and a half years ago, footloose and fancy free. And it's like, all right, it's time for Tolo to come out also. And that was the, the shift to my first public outing with the name. And I moved to Costa Rica, and everyone there knows me by Tolo. Bill or William, just they wouldn't have the slightest idea. <laughs> and I got an email uh, from a stranger one day saying, do you know the uh, origin of the name uh, on planet Earth? And I said, no. And he said, well, in Portuguese, it means silly or foolish. And then it just flowed through me. Yes, full for the divine, full for life, full for creation and the creative process itself. Because that's what we're all in 24-7. And so that's, that was the, the, the connection. And then... I guess about a, a year ago, it's like Tolo is not an identification uh, as, a, as a singular. It's a category of people uh, who are crazy enough to um, do exactly what your mission statement says. Uh, I am I'm here only to truly be helpful. And I love the line that says, I would say it wishes, knowing it, give, uh, it goes there with me. And so, um, Tolo is this expression of, of, of the, the full for the divine, 
one of many fools that roam, you know, nomadically on this earth, and uh, it feels just so right for not an identification of my persona, but as a category of being. Well, and I love the lower case, and to me it means, you know, really letting go of your ego identity is what I gather from that. Absolutely. And uh, because that's really, I think, and you can express on that a little more, I'll let you uh, discuss no, that. No, and that's part of, of, of a lot of my sharing, is that we are trapped by our, our identifiers, including our past and all that we've done, and all that we've accomplished, all that we've named ourselves as, uh, in my case, a teacher, an educator, a counselor, and one with you know enough degrees to, to you know to make one sick thinking about it. And it's like all that had to go. It's like that's just the, the preparation. That's just the, the fun. But it's not the essence of me. The essence of me is really non-identifiable in human terms. And as well as the essence of all of us is non-identifiable. Um, it's part of the realm of creation, which ultimately is the realm of mystery. So it's egoless, and that's what I, I like about it. It's almost like a nickname as opposed to a real name, which doesn't really suffice anymore for any of us to call ourselves that which we have been to this point, that which we are, are identified with as our history, as our as our accomplishments and again, the list goes on. So when we drop that, the ego has no strangulation hold on the mightiness and the power of being present to the now. The mm -hmm. now moment is, is it, as you teach and, and all other um, uh, aware teachers share. And so if I get out of the way, there's more of me is more of my essence able to experience than that. Very, very well said. So uh, I am going to ask you to hold the mic up closer when you speak. Just, you don't have to cover your face, but <laughs> also um, I would, how does one get there? How have you developed this uh, oh, capability? That's, that's an absolutely great loaded question. <laughs> <laughs> There's only one answer. It's called life experience, trial and error, and doing everything that isn't the healthy way. <laughs> and so after a while, you know, in, in, you know, in my 60, going to be 67th year pretty soon, there is a point where you just start to wake up to everything that has been flowing through. And for, I guess for me now, the last 35 years of, of being an educator in the, in the realm of spirituality. And it's just one day we start living that which we have been teaching. And it just gets easier and easier and easier. And the secret is for all of us is not to beat ourselves up until we wake up one day going, I'm doing this naturally. I'm doing this um, experientially. Uh, I'm doing this without effort. And then we just give ourselves a check mark in that category and go on and wait for the next moment of, of total awareness that I'm not struggling anymore, doing it the way that butts my head up against the wall every time. Well, uh, you know, I was speaking, I had a little conversation with uh, someone this morning, and I think it's a, a topic because it's been something we shared too yesterday a good bit because uh, I'm very much into the social media, meaning Facebook and emails and, and really have that going on in a pretty big way. And I see value in that, and it certainly helps to me to be to get the word out and uh, to share the, the message. But also, uh, I think that, uh, what are your comments on sort of everything that the world is expressing right now with like Facebook and all of these other wonderful ventures? Like any other thing that we can be seduced by, there is always that need for conscientious observation of how involved we are. You know, if we wake up and have to check our emails, we're stuck. You know, we're addicted. We're, we're in that place of, of um, I live through how many emails I get a day mentality. And don't think I, 
you know, can't be seduced by that in a heartbeat. And as we all can. Or just it, it, anything that wants to bring us back to our ego screaming, let me show you how important you are in the world, can be a trap. So it's, it's, it's what we learned through the School of Hard Knocks. Moderation and balance. It's always that, it, it, depending on whatever it is that tempts us in the world. Mm -hmm. And temptation is not a negative. It's a natural part of living in a dualistic world. Uh, for every uh, enlightened moment, there's one that isn't so enlightened. And so <laughs> uh, the, the key is for all of us to check, uh, to check our emotional attachment by observation or witnessing. It's, it's a cardinal rule in the world of spiritual growth and development. We witness from a point of what many call the higher self, or through the eyes of love, or the eyes of guidance. There are hundreds of names for it. And we stay in check when we do that. Well, very uh, interesting, and, and I think, well, I'm Charlotte, and I'm addicted to Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> yes, okay, so some the information to th uh, think about. I'm not going to beat myself up for that, but uh, recognize it, I guess. And there's another point, and the balance is really about how much time that we can enjoy living what I'll call a singular existence. But it's really never singular because our guidance and our the creative force is always our ally and always with us. But it's taking time to learn to be comfortable in silence. So that we get to the point where we're in two places at one time. Absolute awareness of the silence that's going on behind the noise, behind the screen, behind the cell phone, behind the chatter that we're sharing with, with a group or another person. And so it's, it's, it's this wonderful, totally balanced place. We're in the world, but not of the world. And so that piece of us that isn't here is monitoring and witnessing the piece that is here to make sure it stays in a place of balance. So, um, so that being said, uh, the world, if we allow ourselves to get caught up in the chaos that's happening now, uh, right now uh, it appears that our little friends in Washington are at battle, and uh, a lot of people are truly frightened by that. And then we've got uh, weather changes, 2012, we've got all these great fear um, things coming at us. So what would Tolo tell us about that? What's happening out there? To remember one thing. That unending, unendingness or everlastingness is an absolute possibility. Now, of course, that is a promise that lives in the world of mystery. Except for those who love to play on the other side and they see the truth in it. But not many of us take the time to play on the other side. Being a channel, I spend a lot of time on the other side or on the other side. And there's an assurance. But does that not create doubt in me? Of course, I can go to those places of, of doubt and trepidation. We all can. The secret, and I love Sai Baba's line, and I quote it all the time, life's a game, play it. And so all the things we're experiencing now is part of the game. And we happen to have been born into a time, and we're adults in a time when it's an exciting world if we're willing to accept that. From a, and the only way we'll accept it is to realize the only thing we have is the present moment. It's the only place we can do anything of worth or value. And so my job is always, what can I do to make the world a better place? Uh, not a happier place, and I'll talk about that this afternoon, but a more peaceful, joyful place for my human existence. And if I stay in that frame of mind, then I worry about, or concern myself, about serving as opposed to being served. 
So if my government isn't serving me, if the world isn't serving me, uh, if people who aren't very consciously aware aren't serving, then it's my job to be the example, as Gandhi says. You know, make, become what you would want from you know, the world. And so it's always a matter of turning it around and say, well, this gives me more momentum and impetus to serve the world even more fully as an example who's of one who is not going to sweat the small stuff, <laughs> who's not going to sit there in front of Fox or CNN or, or, or whatever we can find on the internet to put us in fear mode. Uh, my, my world is about spending time in nature. I spend as much time here as I, as I feel comfortable spending which is usually many hours a day. And that brings me back to solace, peace, and comfort, and the awareness that there is constant everlastingness. And so if, if it all ends, in, or, or if it all changes, all of that is fine. It's part of the constant flow of creation itself. And I know that no matter what, there is an endingness that's going to allow my essence to continue. So if this form falls away, fine. But on the other side of my last breath, there's something exquisite. And I only say that in a, with a, a statement of assurance is because I've been there. And it is just that. It is that. Well, that's refreshing. <laughs> I would make a comment now, but I won't do it because I don't want that comment I was thinking to go out. <laughs> but uh, I would, I would. So what it sounds to me like you're speaking of is detachment and not needing the circumstances in my life to be any way to be at peace. Correct. Now, do you think, for example, um, it's possible for? Uh, someone to be, for example, someone to be a fully present, uh, you know, in the media every day, uh, say an Oprah Winfrey or a Steve Jobs, someone like that, do you think they can be that much in the world and still um, be at peace? Absolutely. Look at the Dalai Lama, world traveler, world educator, world example, constantly in the eye of the public, and totally in that space that's beyond. Yeah, because uh, The Course in Miracles says really to bring that presence into everything we do. So just, uh, it really is about being um, willing to do what it takes to get us there. And then showing up with that energy. Yes, and, and I'll go back to the witnessing part. To are, we, are we interacting in our busyness of life in a detached, peaceful, centered way? Are we witnessing when we get upset, when we get out of control, when we get angered, and have the amazing ability to just laugh at that. If there's one thing that I have, that I have learned in, in, in my experience is to laugh at what I used to call mistakes. And now I find them just a total mess. And uh, <laughs> you know, acts of foolishness. And But they're all great teaching things. So I don't look at what the world would call mistakes, is anything bad or horrendous or something we feel guilty about. It's just a teaching aid that's either sent by life itself or I've set up. And I laugh at the folly that I can get myself into and the fact that I can forget everything that I've been teaching all these years on heartbeat. And it's just out the window when the witness comes in and says, don't sweat the small stuff here. Just look at it, have a good laugh, and go about your day. Right. Well, so it's a matter of uh, practice. I think the Course in Miracles talks about being a Course in Mind training. Precisely. Yeah, so that's Precisely. basically what you're saying as well. Yes. Now what about, like, uh, I find that my goal, my really what I was into, and what I still am into, is to find that common denominator that unifies all of us. And that nugget of truth that weaves between all the spiritual teachings and religions. Do you find that there is a place there that unifies uh, the truth? What is the truth? What 
is the truth. It's that which we can only have a vision of. It's so far beyond our computers to comprehend that any little smattering gives us this aha experience, this, this a reassurance that is beyond. That's the peace that passes all understanding. And we, we have this flow of energy that <coughs> ignites, inspires, enthuses us. And in those moments, we know truth versus illusion. We know that we know that we know. And that's constantly what we're looking for in every decision we make. It, it, am I inspired here? Am I, am I hitting pay dirt? Or am I following another, the, the same old egotistic demands that have been haunting me all these years? And that's, uh, that's the, 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 the constant vigilance we're all after. Is, um, is, is truth staring me in the face and I'm too blind to see it? And is truth just coursing through my emotional world, but I'm just so shut down, I'm not feeling it. And it's always going back to being this open vessel, this, this free-flowing agent in life. And the greatest nemesis, uh, and, and every great spiritual teacher will tell us the same thing, is the errant thoughts in the mind. So it's, it's my training in, in my world by not paying attention to all these thoughts, thinking I have to act on them. No, it's a thought going through. Or you have to figure it out. And there's nothing to do but observe the thought and go, isn't that interesting? <laughs> wow, I didn't think I was capable of such delusion. <laughs> <laughs> I never dreamed I could have that kind of attitude. And we just look at those thoughts and go, goodness, you know, how easily I have been seduced by them in the past and how much fun it is to witness them and realizing that there's not one thing I need to do except wait for the next one to come. And it's always going to come. <laughs> Very good. Well, you know, before, uh, I'd like to give an opportunity if someone has a question. Does anyone have a question they'd like to ask, Tolo? Wow, this is a healed group. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. How do, how do you integrate that in the creative process? I think we all want to be creative. You want to, we want to say we've made a mark in our life. How do you integrate that? Uh, how do we integrate and be more specific with that? Um, how do you integrate the creative aspect of being with. present? In other words, if you're always present, how are you creating and how, how are you visioning the creation? Okay. It's giving ourselves permission to act spontaneously. I've often said the great decision maker is not the mind, based on our experience and our, um, our, our life experience and our common sense or our education. The greatest decision maker is our intuition. And the intuition is constantly there 24-7. And so if I can take enough deep breaths, I open a portal to that energy which signals, do this, be here, go there, just like the mission statement. I'm just, I'm just this wanderer looking at where I can serve. So the creative process comes in when we then take the brilliance of the mind and can implement using our five senses, implement using our wisdom, implement using this enthusiasm and this place of intention inside of us. So all of these things come into play because we just give over to a kind of autopilot. Uh, 
version of self as opposed to the structured, integrated, precision self we've always been. And that was the hardest thing for me, to allow myself to truly become the fool. Because the fool then doesn't care what other people think. And if I've ever had one thing that bugs me in life, it's how do other people think about it? So it's having to overcome all that and just simply say, that's none of my business. And then it ushers in the creativity. You know, many of you have seen um, this daring picture that uh, is on my Skype you know, and, and my Facebook and my all of my, you know, where you put a, on the internet, where you put, a, you know, your photograph. It's me with my face painted. <laughs> and it's like, that was this step of literally not caring. Because people are always emailing me, is that permanent? Is that permanent? <laughs> <laughs> so a creative moment said, have your face painted. And that was it. The decision was made. And I just went with the flow. And went and said to my good friend, paint my face. And that was it. And if, if it's like, if I want to wear the most outlandish outfit that I say represents my spiritual guides or, or my, you know, my cosmic uniform, whatever it might be, I just give myself permission to do that. And so the creative moment is when we go past all the protocol and surrender to something welling up inside that is beyond us asking for expression. Does that answer the question? Absolutely, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Any other questions? Yeah. What would you say is um, a good practice to hasten your um, walk down the spiritual path? Great question. Is to give up the attachment to the path in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, I like that. <laughs> because that's another... <laughs> of the ego. Another thing is that, that the ego loves to hold on to, you know, spiritual circles and spiritual, see this isn't really a spiritual place here, this is a place of pure creativity, because Charlotte never knows what she's going to do. <laughs> but I'm just joking about it. <laughs> Pretty true. <laughs> educational uh, systems in, in the beginning and slowly, slowly, slowly something takes over which would be, which I would call divine discipline. We just automatically come from a place of love. Once we give up all of these uh, past conditions and so um, the spiritual path is one of the things we eventually have to give up. Mm -hmm. And simply mm -hmm. honor that the absolute truth always resides. We have already arrived. Mm -hmm. we, are, we are already that which we're seeking to become. But again, all the great spiritual masters tell us the same thing. It's the same. We're already it. So it's a matter of constantly, if I were going to encourage someone to do anything on the path is give it up and then wake up every morning and simply say I'm going to play the part of the enlightened one today mm -hmm. and just constantly imagine what that part is like and it's as if you've, been, you've auditioned for a part in the community playhouse and you got it and now you're going to get into the mode and the conduct and the essence of that character, it's the same thing. You just get into the space of the enlightened one and live from that vision. Wonderful. One last opportunity. Anyone have a question? Okay.
Well, we'll just leave it at that. But uh, Tolo, I really do appreciate you taking your time and joining all of us here today and sharing this wonderful message. It's been my pleasure. Yes, and also I wanted to just uh, announce that you will be starting a radio show this week on Tuesdays <laughs> at 11.30 a.m. Uh, that's Eastern Standard Time on Blog Talk Radio. And it's actually a part of the Art of, Living, Art of Living Well Radio Network. And it's going, you can actually go to Blog Talk Radio forward slash Art of Living Well. Yes, we're going to name it the Tolo Express All Aboard. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. That's great. That is fabulous. And you do have a, a website up that people can go to. Yes. yes. <laughs> so, so, so we're, we're motivating you uh, to, to, to do whatever. So anyway, it's, uh, we, would you like to share that? Or? We've gone from, in three days, it's a radio program, from renunciate in the woods to, you know, a face that's out there. <laughs> yeah, I pulled him out of the woods and... Uh, <laughs> with us Tuesdays at 11.30, and uh, also they can contact you at uh, your email. Toloperry at gmail.com. Okay, so if you're interested in learning more about uh, or getting a reading or anything, uh, you can contact Bill that way, Tolo. So it's been a pleasure. Thank you all for joining us here today, and uh, let's give uh, Tolo a